So I saw an ad for a free mower, and the best part was that I was very familiar with the area that it was located at. It was about 10 minutes away, and the ad had only been up for about 15 minutes, so my chances were pretty good that I would get it. When I pulled up to the house, this dusty-looking craftsman mower was sitting on the curb waiting for me. What's up everyone and thank you for stopping by. Today's project is this Craftsman lawnmower and to be honest, the picture in the ad wasn't very good. It was taken from the garage 40 feet away from the mower which was at the curb. So when I got out of the car to grab it, I realized it was covered in what looked to be overspray or drywall dust. Whatever it was, it made it look a lot worse than it really was. Besides what was covering the paint on this mower, it looked to be in really good condition, and the main reason why I even bothered going for this mower in the first place was that the ad stated that it was loaded with new parts, some that were installed and some that were not. Even if the engine was damaged or if the deck was destroyed, I'd still have all the parts I could use for another project, so going to pick this free mower up was well worth my time. Before I try and fix this mower, I want to give it a good cleaning, that way when I do fix it, we don't get dirt in places where it's not supposed to be, like in the fuel tank or the carb. I'm also going to take this chance to answer some of your questions that I often get, or at least some of the more interesting ones. There's a lot of questions, so let's get started. The first question is a really good question. How is it that you keep finding really good mowers for free? Most of the times I find rust buckets. Now this question was from a video I did on a free Toro mower that was given away because it started smoking. The answer is pretty simple. I pass on the ones that look to be in bad shape. Now most of the pictures aren't that great, so deciding if a mower isn't a complete rust bucket is really tough sometimes, but so far it's worked most of the time for me. Does that mean I've never gotten a bad mower? No. In fact, I just recently picked up a mower that's almost as old as I am, and it's in pretty rough shape. So even I make bad choices, but it still might make for a decent video, mostly on what type of mowers to avoid picking up. When I get this mower up and running, I will more than likely put it on my own curb to be given away, because no one's going to want to buy this one because it's simply too old. The other option would be to cut the front of the deck and expose the blade, making it into a brush cutter, but I haven't made up my mind just yet. You, know, you should be seeing this video pretty soon, and I'll probably ask the viewers what I should do with it because they always seem to have really good ideas. The next question kind of caught me off guard. The question was, my pull rope just broke, how do I fix it? Now, if I were to answer this question in the comments section, it would be several paragraphs long. So needless to say, I didn't do that. I did outline what they needed to do, but I didn't go into great detail. The reason it caught me off guard was that they wanted one-on-one -on -one help, which is something I can offer, but only by answering questions and giving advice. This was a lot more than I wanted to give. What I can offer you is that I can direct you to one of my videos that might be able to help you, or if you wanted to wait, I can try to find your exact model and make a video about it. That way I can help as many people as I can, not just one person. The next question is about some of the tools I use when diagnosing small engines. The question is, I just started repairing small engines for myself and family members. Could you make a video of the tools you use to diagnose your equipment? Now this is a really good question, it's because the answer is surprisingly simple. I only use the bare minimum, at least in my book, when it comes to tools to diagnose small engines. Most of the time, I only use a bottle of two-cycle fuel to see if an engine will run, and if it doesn't run, I'll check for spark using the spark checker, or sometimes I'll just use the spark plug itself. The last tool is the most important, and it was something I didn't start using until I realized how much time I was wasting trying to get stuff to work and failing. The tool is, of course, my compression tester. Years ago, I would pick up two-cycle equipment and go about fixing the carb, replacing the fuel lines and the primer bulb, only to realize I had a hard time getting it to run correctly. I would then buy a new carb and then replace it, but the problem was still there. I set the equipment aside thinking I would use it for parts, but after time had passed, I decided to take another look at it. I would then do the compression test, only to find out that it was on the borderline of just being able to run, because the engine was just too worn out. If I had used the compression tester the first time, I would have realized that the only way to fix this engine would have been to rebuild it, but instead I wasted a lot of time and money when I didn't need to. Now, if you don't want to spend the $20 on getting a compression tester for yourself, I completely understand. In that case, I would just borrow one from someone who has a lot of tools. Of course, if you asked to borrow my compression tester, I would give you my spare tester that's not very accurate, but it would still let you know you're about to waste your time on something. Unfortunately, after the tools have pointed me in the right direction in which to fix my equipment, the last tool I use is the experience I've gained from working on small engines. Now, this experience is the hardest thing to get your hands on, but with the platform you're watching this video on, it's a lot easier to get a hold of than it was decades ago. 
The next question was from a viewer who was working on an echo blower. The question is, I've changed the carb, ignition coil, spark plug, and have at least 60 PSI using a compression tester, and it still won't start. Of course, the answer is pretty obvious. With a compression of at least 60 PSI, it's right on the edge of enough compression to run and start, and if by chance you do get it running, it will be low on power. The best thing to do would be to rebuild the top of the engine, but unfortunately, the cost to do that would be better spent if you put it towards a new blower instead. Now, I'm all for saving money and keeping stuff out of the landfills, but if a rebuild costs 50% of a new blower and takes your entire Saturday to finish, I think the better deal would be to buy a new blower and save the other blower for parts instead. The other option is, of course, to give that broken blower away, then someone else can finish the project for you, and then they'll get the credit for saving it from the landfill. Either way, you made the best use of your time, money, and a piece of equipment that eventually will get a second chance at life. The next question has to do with the content on this channel. The question is, have you considered expanding your content? I won't go into details of what they suggested, but the answer is yes. However, this is when things get a little tricky. Bear with me here. I'm going to use a small sedan as an example. For years, a car maker has made this small sedan, and it's got a decent reputation for being reliable, fuel efficient, and most importantly, affordable. Then one day, someone at corporate headquarters decides they want to improve this little sedan, and over the next decade, makes the car more complicated, a little bit larger, and unfortunately, more profitable by raising the price. In the end, you have a car that is less reliable, uses more gasoline, and is considerably more expensive than the same car from a decade earlier. What you risk is losing your core buyers who originally wanted just a small sedan, but they may not want what it's now become. I'm all for growth and expansion, but with it comes growing pains and some other terrible, unforeseeable issues. Now, I will eventually have to change some of my content as the years go by, mainly because they'll eventually phase out internal combustion engines on equipment. However, there will be those who hold on to their gasoline-powered equipment till the very end. I do plan on expanding my content, but in what way, I don't know just yet. However, with the feedback I get from the viewers, they'll let me know which way I need to go. That's the main reason we have the comment section in this platform, and it's the best tool I have to grow my channel. There's one particular channel on this platform where all the content on it comes from the viewers' suggestions. Now, this channel is extremely successful because it stays true to the viewers, or at least the majority of them because you can't please everyone. I hope to do the same and listen to the advice of the viewers and let them decide where we should go because without the viewers, I would just be talking to myself. I hope you enjoyed watching me clean this mower and answer some of your questions. Now, I do plan on doing more of these Q&As, so if I don't answer your questions, please don't be afraid to ask and I'll answer them either in the comments, an email, or in a video like this one. Thank you for watching. I really do appreciate your time here. Please feel free to ask me any questions. And I hope to see you in the next video.